Welcome back, friends. So a lot of you know, I recently moved to Mexico. Before I moved, I made an exploratory trip, and one city in particular I visited was Mazatlan, Mexico. In this video, we're going to talk about Mazatlan from an exploratory angle. Perhaps you're looking for your next destination or city if you're wanting to move abroad. I hope this will be helpful, so let's get to it. And please do give us a like and subscribe for more similar content. Now, many have a long list of why they are considering to leave the USA or Canada and are considering to venture down the path much earlier than in retirement years, though retirees make up a large number of people who are leaving their home country. With the recent rise in gas prices, plus the out-of-control inflation, in addition to the great resignation, many are making lifestyle changes and creating new pathways. Is the American dream dead? Mexico is one country with an increased number of not just tourists, but a rise in immigration requests through temporary or permanent residency. I recently got back from visiting Mazatlan, April of 2022, and as it was, the city I selected for my exploratory trip. I was quickly impressed with the beauty of the city, friendly people, and relaxing atmosphere, not to mention the delicious food. The beach is stunning and clean. I was not afraid to travel and walk the beach. In this episode, we're going to talk about several reasons why Mazatlan may be a great place to start the journey of exploration outside the USA if you are in search of a safe and affordable place with abundant culture. I will also share some things you can do at first to ease your transition to a new city. Let's go. Now, Mazatlan is a city in Sinaloa. It's on the Pacific coast of Mexico. It's known for its stunning beaches and amazing climate. Two, the Malacón, which is the boardwalk, is one of the longest in the world. Mazatlan has a population under 500,000 and is expected to grow in the next few years and beyond. Many people enjoy Mazatlan for the cost of living, the beautiful beaches, the weather, abundant restaurants, affordable housing, friendly culture, great expat community, and even close proximity to the USA and Canada. One of the draws beside the excellent culture is the cost of living. Mazatlan boasts some affordable housing prices in comparison to several cities in the USA and Canada. To compare the cost of living between cities, a good site to look it up on is numbio.com. You can enter your current city to compare, or you can compare two different cities in Mexico. According to this site, as of October 2022, a one-bedroom apartment inside the city center is approximately 12,667 Mexican pesos, which is around 633 USD. The site continues to provide other categories to compare such as restaurant prices, transportation, utilities, childcare, and more. Of course, rental prices will vary depending upon what part of the city, but overall they seem to be affordable prices. If you're looking to move to Mexico, and Mazatlan specifically, one recommendation many state is to rent a place for a year first before purchasing a home. Or you can Airbnb it in different areas of the city so you can get a feel for the area. And here's a quick tip for Airbnb, try searching for monthly rentals. 30 plus days, which many rentals offer a discount for longer stays. So if you plan on taking an exploratory trip to visit Mazatlan, here are some things I recommend to do to get acclimated and go off the beaten path, yet incorporate some touristy things in as well. I'd love to get into the heart of the city and experience it as locals do. Sure, I go to some events that are touristy. It's really so I can get a feel of the city, but I love to get away from touristy locations to integrate quickly. Now, the Malacón, which is the boardwalk at Mazatlan, is one of the longest in Mexico. It's great if you want to get a good walk in while feeling the wind from the ocean while getting in your vitamin D. I went for a long walk, but it seemed effortless. It was beautiful. There were shops on the waterfront where you could buy earrings or a necklace or a t-shirt. It was a walk where my stress seemed to fall into the ocean. I'd love to walk through Mazatlan and felt comfortable doing so in that that I walked all the way from the Malacan, which is the boardwalk, all the way up past the Golden Zone. It was about a two hour walk. I stopped at Starbucks and got a coffee on my trip. I felt completely safe in doing so. Next, Stone Island. Stone Island is not really an island. It's a peninsula. 
but it's on the southern end. It's rustic, it's real life, and it's off the beaten path. I highly recommend to take a trip out to Stone Island. We took a fishing slash touring boat to the island, then hopped on a tractor ride, which took us through town, and then we landed at a beautiful restaurant for the day. We managed to stay at the restaurant and beach for nearly four hours. They have horses you can ride on the beach in the water, or you could ride a yellow banana, or you could pick up some tourist items, go for a walk, or relax in one of the many chairs on the patio. Everyone was friendly and accommodating. Next, join a tequila tour. The tour we went on picked us up at our hotel, and from there we drove to a tequila tour on the outskirts of town. They toured us through the facility and explained how they make tequila and even provided some samples at the end. Now let's break down some of the different areas of Mazatlan. There are three areas of Mazatlan mainly. There's the Golden Zone, there's the El Centro, and then there's the Marina. I was able to visit all three areas during my time there. Now there are smaller areas or neighborhoods within these, but broadly speaking, these areas contain the highest level of expats and are within one mile of the coast. El Centro is the oldest part of town. It's historical, it's a little loud, and is located downtown. Some of the key features are older homes and a central marketplace with fresh fruits and vegetables. The golden zone is in the middle between the marina and El Centro. It is the primary tourist area. It is filled with shops, stores, and just about anything you need will be found somewhere. You can walk easily, though many prefer to take an Uber or a Pulmonia to get around. The marina is further north and is in an area of town that's seen the greatest build-out of new construction. New apartments and condos are going up rapidly, are generally affordable, but are a little far away from the tourist area. If you choose to live in this area, a vehicle is needed. Next, I recommend to take an Uber drive. To get around town, yes, you can walk, you can drive, you can take an Uber, a local taxi, a Pulmonia, and of course, there are buses and vans and even local buses. At the time of my visit, a Pulmonia ride was approximately 100 pesos, which is about 5 USD. Now, here's a quick tip. Always ask for the cost of the ride before you accept. One of the best Uber rides I had was on my way to the airport as I left the city. The Uber driver took us through the heart of the city, away from the coast, and not near the major highways where the large city buses would go. As someone who is normally on edge with an Uber driver, it was one of the best rides I have had. I felt I was able to see and experience the back roads of Mazatlan, and I'm grateful for that road trip. There was dirt in the air, and it was dry season, and he was flying through the traffic, yet I felt completely comfortable. The Uber driver probably had no idea how much that ride meant to me. So should you quit your job and move to Mazatlan? Maybe. Or see if your job is open to remote or even consider a work from anywhere job or even changing fields. To Mazatlan is a great city to even slow down and retire. Is speaking Spanish required? Now, I took five years of Spanish in high school and college and living in Texas, I used it every now and again. During this trip, I was able to dust off my Spanish and use it more than I had in a while. In fact, it gave me the confidence to be able to order food, ask for directions, and get around town on the limited Spanish I was able to remember. The more I spoke, the more words I remembered. And as I read the street signs, conversing with taxi drivers, reading restaurant menus, along with Google Translate, I was able to get around town with ease. Now, if you do not have experience speaking Spanish, it would be beneficial to start by learning the basics and increasing your knowledge of the subject. Learning the language is essential, in my opinion, if you want to barter at the fruit and vegetable stands, for example, and to avoid being gringoed. Now, was this trip worth the experience? It was absolutely worth taking an exploratory trip for me. I learned how to break into the culture and to even leave my culture behind from where I was coming from. I looked forward to embracing the new, asking questions, and being open to a new adventure. Now, while many expats tend to gravitate toward Mexico City or San Miguel de Allende, Lake Chapala, Puerto Vallarta, Oaxaca, or Santiago de Querétaro, Mazatlan is a city that may be overlooked, but should definitely be on your radar to explore. So did I end up moving to Mexico? Check out this video here and take a look and see. So have you been to Mazatlan? 
Are you considering retiring in this beautiful city or living and working remotely? Are you considering to leave the USA or Canada and shopping for your next destination? Drop a question or comment below and remember to subscribe for more.